Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lafayette Sports Network. I'm Matt Fine. We're talking about softball today. It is the high school class of 2022, the Lafayette class of 2026, and I'm joined by the head coach and Caitlin Delahaba, who is entering her fifth season at Lafayette. Hi, coach. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit before we get into your, your class of 2022, the high school class of 2022. Um, how was your fall? I know it's an off season, of course, but a lot of work needs to be done, I'm sure. Uh, so take us through the fall a little bit. How did things go in, I guess, September, October into November? We had a really good fall. Uh, we lucked out a lot with weather too, which was awesome. We got to be on the field, I think, way more than we have in years past, which was great. Um, we're a little bit more of a seasoned team. We're pretty heavy in our sophomores and juniors now. I feel like we've been kind of perpetually young for the last yeah. few years. So that's really exciting. We also have some great senior leadership and a lot of experience in that senior class, um, which is awesome as well. But I think from a, the cultural side of things, like I think our our group really enjoys being around each other. They're excited to come to practice. They're excited about the spring. So I think all in all, it was definitely one of the best falls that we've had. And obviously being able to have, you know, everything feel much more normal this fall was great too, in comparison to the last couple of years. Yeah. And the weather did feel like a, a very mild fall, which was, I know, nice for all the baseball and softball, in addition to just the regular fall sports out there. It's just a good thing when we have a mild fall. So that's, yeah. that's good for you guys. Let's talk about your team a little bit. Uh, the, I guess when I say team, this is your uh, your future team. And it's always a little bit weird when we talk about some of those spring sports, because we're talking about um, your next your next class, but we really won't see these players on the field for you in competition for a little bit more than a year. So it's, it's names that we want to keep in the back of our minds. It's not like we're going to see them, you know, compete in the fall. Uh, it's more of a spring season. So we're talking about seeing them in 2023, but it is your recruiting class of 2022. Uh, we have five players, uh, one pitcher, three infielders, we have one outfielder, although it seems like most of these um, student athletes of yours can play many different positions, but I'm going with their main, uh, their main position, the number one position. And we'll start off with Marissa Powell. She is a 5'9 right-handed pitcher from Sunderland, Maryland, which is just southeast of uh, Washington, D.C. She is a three-sport star in high school, softball, uh, baseball, soccer. She is the 2021 regional champs, by the way, or she was on a regional championship team in softball, and she's a three-time captain. Tell me a little bit about Marissa. So uh, you said a lot about her right there. She's really, really athletic and um, obviously like a, a really tall stature kid. Like she's a, a really good athlete physically when you look at her. Um, but also she can pitch and that's primarily what we're bringing her in for. But she also plays shortstop for her travel team. She hits so definitely athletic enough to do a bunch of things, which is something that we really try to recruit toward. We like when our student athletes can do more than one thing. We do keep a smaller roster. So being able to know that we can use um, our athletes in more than one way is really helpful. But I also think one of the things Marissa brings to the table that is really valuable is her leadership. And she's a really big team player. Um, she's a really, really nice kid. Like when you talk to her, she just is really engaged. She cares a lot about her teammates and she's gotten a ton of praise from all of her, you know, travel ball coaches about how great of a leader she is. And I think culturally, that's something that we've also been really careful about who we're bringing in and making sure that they fit in with what we're trying to build. So I think Marissa is a really, really valuable asset in that sense. And then obviously we think she's a really great pitcher too. So I think that she's going to help us on the field and make a really big impact in the circle as well. Sounds good. Let's move to your middle infield. We have Kyleen Gooch, 5'9". Now, I, I like Kyleen. She listed middle infield, but on the questionnaire that, you know, you send out to these student athletes, she actually listed eight of the nine <laughs> positions. Though so she had primarily middle infield, but she says, yeah, I can play first. I can play third. And by the way, I can play all three outfield positions too. So uh, she's all over the place. Oh, actually, she listed seven of the eight because she didn't list pitcher and didn't list catcher. So seven of the eight positions on the field. She's from Red Hill, Pennsylvania, which is about 45 minutes south of Easton. Uh, she was a two sport, sport high school star, uh, varsity in softball, of course, but also in field hockey. And, you know, it's Lafayette. So I, I feel like I'm redundant when I say this all the time, but she's a four year honor roll uh, recipient. Uh, tell me about Kyleen. Yeah. So again, another really great athlete, obviously, again, like really tall, like athletic looking when you look at her. Um, we really feel strongly that if you can play middle infield really well, you probably can play most other positions on the field. So again, when we're recruiting 
especially in that, um, you know, outside of the pitching and catching positions, we're really looking at how much can you do if you can play shortstop, you can play second, you can probably go over to third and first and into the outfield if we need you to. So I think Kylene again, adds a lot of versatility to what we're doing, a lot of athleticism. She's um, a great hitter as well. And I think just being able to know that based on the team's needs, she can do multiple things is going to be really valuable. So we're excited about her again, another really great kid. Um, has a great family as well. And we're just really excited to be able to bring her in and see what she can do. Now, it wouldn't be a Caitlin Delahaba recruiting class if we didn't start talking about recruits from California and Virginia, something <laughs> I've learned about you uh, pretty much from day one. So these last three are all from that area. So we'll get our first California student athlete in there, Kylie Sweet, uh, 5'7", another middle infield. And I know baseball and softball, you know, you recruit up the middle a lot, catcher, pitcher, middle infield, center fielder. Uh, but she's from Escondido, uh, California, if I pronounce that right, 30 miles south, or excuse me, 30 miles north of San Diego, four-year varsity starter, um, and she was also on an undefeated uh, league squad as well, so someone who knows how to win. Yeah, and she comes from the same organization as another athlete on our team, so Kaya, who's a freshman right now, played in the same um, breakers organization as her so that's kind of how we made that connection there when we were recruiting Kaya obviously we were starting to look at the class ahead and having a connection there and again very high academics she wanted the academics she wants to come east another really great athlete um, who can play in the middle which means she can play on the corners and in the outfield as well really good gap to gap hitter she plays in a great organization where we know that she's going to get here and have that high softball IQ and be able to jump right in and pick up on what we're doing. We know she's coached really similarly to the way that we coach. And so all those things just kind of align for us. And again, another just great kid that from the beginning, every time we talk to her, you're like, how can you not, you know, like her and want her to be a part of what you're doing? So we're also really, really excited for Kylie to get here. Sounds good. Now let's go back to the East coast, but we're going to head down to Virginia, as I mentioned, uh, Megan Co Coyle, uh, five, six, a uh, first baseman who can also pitch, but she's mm -hmm. from Herndon, Virginia, and just outside of DC, four years of varsity softball under her belt. And as I mentioned, we're talking about good student athletes. And again, I say I'm redundant all the time, but I think it's worth mentioning because that's what they're there for a national honor, honor society, uh, student athlete as well. Tell us about Megan. So yeah, so Megan and Marissa actually play on the same team. So that's kind of how uh, we found both of them the same organization. I'm really familiar with that organization, the LLG Nova. They're again from the same area that I yeah. grew up in. So that's awesome too, like getting to have those connections, being able to see them when I'm home and in that area. And Megan, again, wanted the high academics. She wanted to be able to come in and play softball and get a great education. And that's obviously something that aligns with, you know, the type of student athlete we're looking for. Um, at first, we were looking at her as a pitcher, but then realized that she could also play first base really well and that she that was more primarily what she wanted to do was hit and play first base. But again, having somebody who can pitch if we need them to is super valuable and she's a very good pitcher as well. So again, just having some of that versatility and bringing in another great person was really valuable for us. And I think we fit with exactly what she was looking for from the academic and athletic side of things. So it just worked out that kind of the stars aligned on that one. Yeah, you mentioned Megan and Marissa kind of both being, even though Marissa's from Maryland, technically from Maryland, still the same kind of area. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the last person who's another uh, Virginia player. We have Grace Hausman, a 5'5 outfielder who can also play middle infield, but from South Riding, Virginia, that's west of Washington, D.C., four years of uh, varsity softball, all as a starter. Um, and she's got a 524 career high school batting average, so she can definitely hit the ball. Of course, most you know uh, high schoolers miss that middle year. So we're really talking about two years of high school ball for her so far. She's about to enter into that third year, you know, COVID notwithstanding. Um, and as a junior last year, she was all state. So another top notch offensive player for you. Yeah. So I actually found, I saw Grace for the first time when she was super young. It's one of those, I think she was in like eighth or ninth grade. And at that time you're always like, oh, that's so far away. But she actually played at that time on the team, the very first team that I played on when I played softball. So that was the connection there. I went to work at camp back in Virginia for the shooting stars. She was playing on the shooting stars. And I'm like, oh, she's a baby. She's on that team. And then before you know it, she's not a baby anymore. And she's the age that you're recruiting. So um, that was kind of how we found out she's super fast and athletic. That's why her average is so high. So she can bunt, hit, slap, do kind of 
a little bit of everything, which, you know, obviously makes it hard on defenses, um, allows her to get on base a lot. And I think, again, adding that athleticism and speed on the bases is going to be awesome for us. And yeah, she can play infield, she can play outfield. So the versatility there, I think for us, we see her as being an outfielder, but again, knowing that she can come in and, and fill in in the infield and can do that as well is definitely valuable. And you just never really know what's going to happen or what your needs are going to look like. So knowing that she can do both is great too. But again, she's a great person, very smart, wants the high academics. And so I think all the way around, it was a good fit. Sounds good. Well, those are your five players for the, again, the high school class of 2022, graduating from Lafayette in 2026. So that's exciting. Something we can look forward to uh, when we see them in your, their first season, I guess, in a Leopards uniform would be spring of 2023. So we're all over the place with dates. <laughs> um, let's, let's just talk before we wrap things up, let's just talk about your upcoming season. Um, I'm going to mention some of the games, you know, I was looking at your, your exciting schedule you guys have coming up and I'm just hoping that you guys get to play every game that's on there, of course. Um, but you start, you know, the students are coming back real soon. Uh, when do you start practices and, and what are you looking forward to prior to opening day, which again, I'll mention, but it's in late February. So our first practice is Monday, January 24th, which is their first day of school. So that's four weeks from when we play. So this, uh, the Friday before that is five weeks exactly until we start playing. So we are definitely going to hit the ground running. Um, obviously we, you know, try to be very, uh, do what we can at, when we're stuck on campus inside a little bit in the beginning and we try to keep it light and fun for them so that they don't you know get bored kind of being in that small indoor space but I think the best thing that we can do is just be together as much as possible and we had we have a pretty long winter break at Lafayette so I think our winter break was almost like six weeks by the time um, you know, most of our kids went home for finals and stuff like that. So they've been apart for a while and they're really excited to get back together. And like I said, I think earlier, I think culturally we are at a place that we've been working really hard to get for the last few years where our girls genuinely want to be together all the time. Like we were in small groups a little bit in the fall and they were like, when are we going to practice as a team again? Like, when are we going to be there as a group? So we're going to do some combinations of things this spring when we get back, you know, again, being indoors, trying to keep, be creative as much as we can. And sometimes in small groups, sometimes in team stuff, sometimes we separate the pitchers and catchers to do a little bit of their stuff um, on their own. And sometimes we go out to wrap hold the field hockey field to get some defense. So we have to be definitely creative as we go into those first few games, but definitely that first weekend that we play, the teams that we're playing are in the same situation. So, you know, we're, we're playing other East coast teams that are in the cold and, you know, practicing inside and stuff like that. So we definitely really highly anticipate that first weekend, hope that we get good weather at the end of February in Maryland. Yeah. Um, but one of my best friends is actually the head coach at university of Maryland, Eastern shore. And so that's why we're going there. We actually grew up playing together. We were next door neighbors and she's the head coach there. So that's exciting too. And we haven't gotten to play each other yet since we've been at our job. So that's kind of how we connected there and, and put that together. So we're praying for some uh, good, good warm weather at the end of February. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, as you mentioned, okay, so let's, let's just uh, finish up with some dates because you mentioned going to the Eastern shore of Maryland. So the season does open up against um, St. Peter's in Maryland mm -hmm. uh, on the 25th of February. Um, there's just, I'm looking at some of just the highlights on your schedule. That's not, these are not all the games, of course, but, um, if you got an exciting Florida trip in mid March, that's going to be really exciting just to go down there and, you know, have the, all the kids be together, uh, for the better part of a week, um, on the road playing in, and you know, obviously it's going to be pretty warm down there at the time when you guys go down there, that'll be great. You have a home opener against Fairleigh Dickinson on the 23rd of March. That's a date you want to circle in your calendar. And then just a couple of days later, you're back at home in the Patriot League for your uh, league opener against obviously the defending champs in, uh, in BU. So that, that's a home series, as I just mentioned. So a lot of really exciting uh, dates on the schedule coming up. And um, I know it feels real cold. I know we just got a lot of snow in Easton, uh, but before you know it, you're going to be on the field uh, and it's going to be an exciting spring and I'm looking forward to it. And I want to wish you the best coach. Yeah, thank you. We are too. And we're definitely excited to get back on the field. We actually haven't been on a spring break trip like the Florida one since 2019. Yeah. So we're definitely, uh, I know the seniors for sure are excited because it's been a while for them, but I know all the girls are really excited to get out and play and have a full season and be able to get back out and com compete. So we're really excited for that. Sounds I think it's going to be a great year. Yeah. And we're going to have a lot of the games on the Lafayette Sports Network. So that should be exciting too, if they can't make it. 
obviously onto campus. So yeah, coach, coach best of luck with your season. Have a great rest of your uh, winter break, which is now only a couple of days long before you guys return next week. Um, and again, the best of luck this spring. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. That'll do it for us today. I'm Matt Fine on Lafayette Sports Network. I hope everybody has a safe day and a wonderful spring break or spring semester, I should say. We'll see you <laughs> soon. Take care.